So one of the things that we talk about in church all the time is the golden rule. The golden rule, love thy neighbor as thyself, to me is perfectly exemplified in the Good Samaritan parable that Jesus told. We often hear the, the statement, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, really, in, to me, in that parable, it's not about the Good Samaritan treating the injured person like the Good Samaritan wants to be treated. It's about treating the Good Samaritan like the Good Samaritan wants to be treated. Mm -hmm. So it's really disassociating yourself from your personal view and assuming the role of the person you're trying to help and understand what's important to them. Well, I think that's a great uh, place to, to jump in, Ray, and we're really fortunate to have you here with us. You know, Ray is a longtime member of the congregation and is currently serving in an advisory capacity with the Diversity Council in Rochester. And you've already gotten me excited because you're preaching to a preacher now. <laughs> <laughs> you've opened the good book and you found a grounding text. And, and Ray, we appreciate what, what, what you bring to this conversation as we continue exploring what does it look like to be uh, a good neighbor and to practice the art of neighboring in our community. And so you've kind of already jumped in a little bit with your own sense of uh, what the Good Samaritan parable means for both your own work as uh, in the community and your own life as a Christian, and also how it kind of grounds your sense of what our community neighboring should be like. I'm just curious, as a Christian, what, what you know, kind of expanding on that, what does it mean for you to follow that call from Jesus to love our neighbors? So the, the primary thing to love our neighbor is to reposition yourself into the view of your neighbor so that you understand what they see from their perspective so that you can better understand how to connect with them or serve them, as the case may be. And that is on us to learn that. It's not on our neighbor to teach us how to understand their view of the world. It's really about taking the initiative of wanting to deepen and grow in our own life and say, what can I do to be a good neighbor as opposed to how can I expect others to be a good neighbor for me? Right, right, right. And so like, how does the Diversity Council help us then in the community? What is the Diversity Council doing today to help you know, any of us want to grow in our own understanding of how to be a good neighbor? Well, the catchphrase that the Diversity Council uses as a part of this process is to stop, listen, learn, then act. It's about, the burden is on us to learn about other people and their perspective. And then once you understand that, that'll inform you on about how to respond or how to help. And one of my favorite quotes from Maya Angelou is, do the best you can. When you know better, do better. And that gives us all grace for not necessarily feeling horrible about things we may have done in the past, attitudes and beliefs that we may have harbored 20, for me, 20, 30 years ago, which now I feel more informed about, and I no longer hold those same views. And we have to give grace to each other about that, how our views evolve as we become more educated. And grace seems to be a great thing to hold on to this, you know, as we think about the art of neighboring. This is something that is a lifelong project that will continue to evolve and grow, not just as we learn new neighbors and existing neighbors and neighbors that we may be blind to, but also discovering some of our own gifts and graces that we may not fully realize are there, that have been untapped. So you said again that it's stop. Stop. Mm -hmm. Listen. Listen. Learn. Learn. Mm -hmm. Act. So in that, where do you think the challenges are today in our community here in Rochester that, that we need to, you know, or some of the challenges that we need to overcome and work on together? The all of through all four of those first of all everybody's life is filled every day with all the things that we do mm -hmm. i sometimes refer to it as life gets in the way we have to figure out how to stop 
the routine to listen and learn about the lived experiences of others so that we know how to act. And sometimes I've heard it said, the best way to approach this process when someone is different from you is to develop a child's sense of wonder. I wonder why that person behaves that way under these circumstances. I wonder why people thought it was correct on January 9th to storm the Capitol. I wonder why when someone, uh, a person of color is killed, there's a violent response to that. What is it in their lived experiences that leads them to conclude this is the way to respond to those circumstances? If we understand why, then we understand more about how to work with it. And so part of that is, is breaking down stereotypes or assumptions we might have around uh, motivation or background or life story, and then begin that work of listening and kind of building more bridges than allowing barriers, walls, or a lack of curiosity or empathy to, to keep us separate or, or to not be in dialogue with each other. How, what would you imagine uh, or name Ray as some of the building blocks for a strong and vibrant community? Among the building blocks that we have for a strong and vibrant community is to figure out, once again, how to do those things we just talked about, really. Um, we want to connect with people on a personal level, break down our systems so that we step into another world and understand different people's perspectives. Mm -hmm. And then once we have that, include them in the conversation and include them in the decision process. A lot of people use the term, they say we want to be, we want every, uh, we hear this in the law all the time about treating people, people equally. Mm -hmm. That's not quite far enough. What we really want to do is we want to treat people equitably. Yes. Right? We want to all be at the same starting point as a part of this conversation. So if we bring people support that makes them, that gives them equity in the conversation or the process of building our community, then we can all be together on the same page. And sometimes that equity means that some folks have an opportunity to uh, have more um, ability to share their story. And sometimes it means that equity is that some folks need to do more listening than having their stories be shared or to be the first to speak into something. And I think that's a really interesting and important point, especially thinking about the way that Jesus is a way maker and how frequently he would go into places that most other people wouldn't and would have dinner or conversation with people who were considered outcast or un, uh, unworthy, not valuable um, or, 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 or respected. But then at the same time, he would also elevate people, especially the marginalized, the abused, the ill, the forgotten. Um, and, and elevate them to a place to really heighten their, their standing so that people might see them, recognize them, and listen to them in a new way. Right. So bringing, that's a good anal analogy on the equity part of how we bring people into the table and the conversation so that everybody's voice is heard. Yeah. I sometimes like to think of it as a choir. We want every part in the choir to be heard. In Rochester, we want every voice of every community, yeah. at least every community and most of the people, to be heard in making the great decisions that move our community forward. I think it's a really interesting metaphor and a great one actually because you want a consonant sound right. where every part is singing well in a, a healthy, robust way that's shared and that when there is not equity and there's an over-functioning of some over others, there's a dissonant sound. Right. And while it might produce something, it is not the melody of right. a functioning and healthy and, and vibrant neighborhood. It's about creating harmony, yeah, like music. And to be a good musician, I think you know this as a member of our choir, it involves not just knowing how to sing your part, but how to listen to all the parts around you and find right. your place in it. Right. Everybody has their opportunity to lead, mm -hmm. but everybody also has their opportunity to support. 
Well, I wanted to also ask you, Ray, what do you want the Christ UMC community to know about opportunities to practice neighboring through the work of the Diversity Council? The practice, the Diversity Council, just like we always say here at church, what we want is everybody to give of your time, your talents, your gifts, and your treasures, right? In many different ways. This isn't just about the Diversity Council. Mm -hmm. But as a part of the, the Diversity Council is about helping people connect. If you are a part of a community that is not particularly um, well heard in Rochester, we want to help you find a place to have your voice heard. If you're an individual who's looking to learn, the Diversity Council has many different programs that are used in schools, in businesses, and just for people in the community. So for example, one of my favorites for the folks, just um, someone who's not bringing it into a corporation, for example, we have a program called uh, Allies and Advocates in which we help people understand when they walk into an uncomfortable circumstance that they don't know how to um, participate in so that someone's being bullied, someone's being discriminated against, um, things like that. This is a common school kind of concept as well. Mm -hmm. How do you safely partner with someone to make sure that the pressure goes off um, and that um, com communities are heard so that that person who's being bullied feels there's someone with them. You're being a good neighbor. And that and that's really vital, especially when we can be a bystander who intervenes in a situation that does not need to escalate further, but is in a very uncomfortable and, and just situation. And, and I think that's really wonderful how the Diversity Council invites us to um, either be a part of amplifying voices, also learning and practicing new skills, and engaging in a wider number of our neighbors than we might naturally be able to do in our own rhythms of work and school and church and other commitments we have. So I really appreciate not just that work, but the way that you are really inviting us to keep imagining what new skill might I learn, what new story might I, 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 I value and gather. What, so it's one of the things that people often want to do is they want to go, once they get energized about this topic, they want to go meet someone and, and get their story. Yeah. You have to be careful about that. Absolutely. It's not their job to educate you. Yes. It's your job to educate you. Yeah. And if every, if, if, if every, if that person had to tell their story a thousand different times to a thousand different people, that takes a lot from them. Yeah. You have to wait until that conversation's that, they're, that you're close enough to the person that they're really able to have that conversation in a give and take way. Because strangers cannot be intimate easily, but neighbors can in, the, in building a relationship. Uh, the one exception that I would point out that we use at the Diversity Council is we have developed what's called a human library. Hmm. That periodically events are uh, conducted at the Rochester Public Library where you can literally check out a human book and so someone who may be in the LGBTQ community or an immigrant or whatever it might be will sit and talk to you for 30 minutes. Hmm. Now they are volunteering mm -hmm. to be a part of this conversation with you. And you now can ask them questions that you might not feel comfortable asking in public or in other ways. And just hear more about their life story and what makes that person who they are. Well, that's a, a really wonderful resource and a tremendous gift that those individuals are offering to our community. And I think that people can learn more at diversitycouncil.org. And Correct. I'm sure that anyone at the church can come and talk to you any Sunday. Yes, <laughs> yeah, they're most Sundays, so. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Ray, thank you so much for being a part of this conversation. And thank you for tuning in and learning more about how we can continue being good neighbors in the community. Thank you, Ray. Thank you very much.